So I found this cartoon a while ago, and it's a, these characters sitting around on the couch, drinking, watching TV. Hey, how do you know if a woman has been working at a computer? There's white out on the screen, and then they burst into laughter. And off in the distance is a woman who says, you dumb hypocrites, you mock the half of humanity that makes your graceless existence bearable. Men should pause for one moment and take another long, hard look at the very thing that brings meaning to their meaningless lives. And then she leaves. <laughs> and there we have it. So this morning, for a number of years now, um, Will and I, many years ago, talked about the potential value of having a presentation and giving some information to dads about how to talk to your sons about manhood and the kind of men that you want them to become. And it evolved into um, my coming up with a kind of structure around that for writing something that um, turns out to be, can be, a letter from you that has various components to it. And so this morning, the goal that I have is I want to talk a little bit about um, manhood and masculinity these days in the United States. And, but most importantly, spend a few minutes talking about different, the different components that would be useful and worthwhile to put in the form of a letter to your guys that both helps, them, helps you be clear about the things that you expect and want, but also is something that they can have and carry with them. So when folks look at um, the kind of traits that distinguish, that's normatively different between boys and girls, these are the qualities that keep coming up. And they're coming up still even to this day. The kinds of things that guys tend to demonstrate is they're more likely to be what's called instrumental, which is hands-on, kind of active doing stuff, um, competitive, dominant, territoriality is a really big kind of dynamic issue, um, toughness is an important quality that, that um, shows up and is, there's a lot of emphasis on that, um, and individuality and, and independence. And for girls and women, there's more expressiveness, there's more of a focus on group cohesion, cooperation, mutual support, and intimacy. Not a surprise to most of us that these are the things. This is the, related to the kind of experiences that we have um, ourselves growing up as men. But it turns out that the nature of the miraculous, wonderful, incredible things that are going on in this modern age that um, make living better than it's ever been for the totality of humanity on the, on the planet has ended up creating some difficulties for boys and men to figure out what manhood is supposed to be. And there are basically the old-fashioned notion about that has got some real problems with fitting into how things are these days in our culture and society. The, there's a moving target, what I'm calling a moving target for productive work, and that is that the brute force, that um, need and value of, being, of muscularity that, that is a physical distinction between men and women, doesn't matter anymore. Industrialization puts machines in place, and the technology makes that even more sophisticated that there's the global economy is such that the people that you're competing with are now not your kind of neighbors and local folks. It's like all over the world. There is the free market economy, which means anything's open and everything is um, a, a go. That um, the modern employment model doesn't give you any kind of stability for being in a place, a company, a corporation to kind of find your niche in that. There's, it shifts across your lifespan. The, just the sheer pace of change that's happening, especially now that the technological and electronic computerized advances that, that happen in terms of greater and greater kind of exponential increases in computing power. 
equality, which is an absolutely vital characteristic of the kind of progression of human relationships and human civilization, has thrown the traditional view of manhood completely up into the air because there's no longer this clear and absolute distinction that allows you to feel solid about the kind of identity that you have as a guy and as a man, that the sexual revolution has um, swept away all of the notions about what our roles are as men in terms of sex and sexuality and relationships. Consumerism means that the focus is on all of these things that you purchase and buy and possess rather than how you are and a way of being. That um, rather than having a focus on the becoming mature and adult, the idea of the kinds of things that are usually, traditionally, historically associated with being an adolescent, which is a lack of responsibility, a lack of commitment, a lack of, of, of in integration into the community, has become this kind of ethos that's, that's evolved. The feminist revolution means that now the competition has expanded to double what it was before. Not a bad thing for us as humans, but a complicated thing for us if you hold an old style view of manhood and masculinity. The modern educational system actually is better designed for the way that girls and women learn than it is for men, boys and men. There's the whole notion about, in our culture, because of the beauty of the United States, where we don't have a singular, unifying, and often, in some aspects, oppressive cultural requirement that everybody be and believe the exact same thing. But at the same time, one of the values of that umbrella, cultural umbrella, is that everybody has a common definition about things. And manhood and masculinity is one of those that we've lost. And the thing that's been happening for a considerable time for us, again in the United States and then in the West, is that the transition to manhood, what actually will constitute having made it to being a man, doesn't exist. Okay, so these are the things that are kind of going on. Historically, what happens is that there are these models or exemplars or archetypes that we have used, people, humans have used, to kind of define and um, characterize, exemplify manhood and masculinity. The um, traditional archetypes that have been in place are the king, warrior, magician, lover. In an agrarian society, where the entirety of your life is spent on that particular property where you're having to sustain yourself, a limited range of archetypes is a useful thing. When the scope of what you can do expands to almost anything, these old archetypes are problematic and they're very limiting. Then you have the notion of the range of stereotypes, especially here in the United States, traditionally, historically, and that is the genteel patriarch, which these days has kind of evolved into the CEO model. The heroic artisan, the self-made man. Great kind of concepts for how to be, but again, we've got three. And then we come to the idea of role models and what, who our boys are exposed to and who are being presented to them willingly or unwillingly by us as people to model and emulate. And there's quite a range. And as you can see, I'm, the folks that I put up here, except for the celebutants, who I can't find a single reasonable example of, but in every other category, we've got good positive role models, but also
But the core for boys about who they are watching is us, their fathers. And that puts us in a position of then having to figure out what is it that we need to do and can do and should do to be able to kind of communicate these things. And let me mention again, this lack of a common cultural umbrella means that that ends up, as with so many other things while we're raising our kids these days, is that you have to find a way to communicate that directly. It's not kind of present in the culture. It's not a common message that everybody gets. It's not, we have to think about it. We have to figure out what to say. We have to figure out what to do. And that's what gets me thinking about what's, what are the things that, that somebody like me can do about talking about what's important and how you would go about doing that kind of thing. So what do guys need then? The love, support, encouragement, um, meaning, purpose, joy, connectedness, validation, because everybody does. This is not unique to boys and men. But it also turns out that as they're going to be searching, as we did ourselves, about what is going to constitute being a man, there needs to be some kind of definition. And the desirable thing, I'm going to make the, the case, that the desirable thing is that it's a way of being, a way of a core qualities rather than just how you act or how you appear. And that brings us to, and we'll have a focus on, what are traditional masculine virtues, which we'll, I'll talk about in a little bit. Everybody knows about, all of us know, men and women, about what the guy rules are in terms of the physical characteristics that make the kind of ideal guy that you would compare yourself to, size, bulk, length, the social aspects of how you act in social situations, about um, what kind of way you are as an intimate partner, about what you're supposed to focus on with sex, namely getting as much as possible, being as accomplished and competitively successful. And that alcohol and drugs, that everybody knows a man is going to be able to hold his liquor, that there's a very constricted range of emotions that are allowed, that you should find, treat everybody as a potential competitor, that intimacy is a very risky, tricky thing because if you show too much of it, then you become a girl. And then aspects of what are the kinds of careers that are acceptable and legitimate and validating for you as a guy versus not. Aspects. The idea that I, that I have here in presenting this is not these are desirable things, they exist. This is these kind of, of pressures for your boys and both if they don't fit well within this but also if they try to fit within this, it starts eliminating and limiting what they're actually able to experience and the kind of breadth and range and depth of emotional and actual experience in their lives. And so this is going on. It went on for us. That's, this has been true for generations for us, for guys in the United States. And so again, we've got the traits that um, are the ones you're supposed to focus on and the things that you're supposed to exemplify as a guy. And the argument I will make is that it's extremely limiting. And it's extremely limiting, especially these days with the kinds of opportunities and challenges that exist in the United States and in the modern economy where our culture exists, that boys need a range, a broader range of ways to define themselves as men that don't limit them to the archaic notions of that kind of, of narrow view of manhood. And so the idea here is that while independence is important, that it also requires, as a way of being a fully rounded human being, cooperation that goes with that. And so my notion here is that the um, kind of aspects of manhood that, that I took my shot at saying, let's talk about some other terms for, for masculine virtues. And that is confidence and determination, which is toughness, but with sensitivity. And dominance, but with compromise, which is 
often a definition of leadership. That invulnerability, which you're supposed to be as a guy, but being able to be open with what you're feeling and what's going on inside. And so that notion of taking risks emotionally, which would be courageous. Pride with humility, which is integrity to me. Love with vulnerability, which is intimacy. Control with generosity would be responsibility. Power with tenderness would be strength and intensity. Not just, but actually having joyousness. Being able to express that too with the idea of being passionate. Okay. Another thing that, that is important for our guys, for guys as they consider and try and figure out how to move toward manhood, is the idea of what the, that manhood is an actual legitimate identity to pursue. There's a lot of complications and difficulties about the transition that's happening to recognizing that women are co-equals and that they can comp- and will and do compete directly with men if you want to use those categorical distinctions. But that's created this struggle about saying, well, that means that manhood and masculinity and womanhood and femininity are illegitimate then. We should do away with them. Well, the first thing I'm going to say is good luck with that, about whether that can actually happen. But the idea here is that It is legitimate because there are normative, a range of distinctions, and there is an identity that we have that includes our masculinity, femininity, our manhood, or womanhood. In addition, lots of pressure and direction this comes from, and so it's not just, it's peers, but it's not just guys, but girls also will, frankly, at times, try and constrain your boys about what is a real man because they're socialized in the same way. But somewhere they've got to get this um, view of manhood and that manhood is a legitimate kind of, of admirable identity to have once you define and have a clarity about what the characteristics are of that. And that it's not a zero-sum game. That if you have manhood, then the, the, if men, by having identity as men, means that women suffer. That they don't, if one's up, the other's down. And you can't have people have equal opportunity as men and women. Um, desperate. One of probably the core things for us as guys and our boys is about the um, permission and the um, experience and the encouragement to experience the full range of emotions and have those be a part of of, of their lives. When you had to run down wild animals in the savannah, you can't afford to cry about scratches and hurt feelings. But it's been a long time since we've been running down wild animals in the savannah to support the community. And there's personal experiences that each of us know we have as men that don't get validated or encouraged and in fact sometimes actively discouraged. And it limits us and it causes um, wounds and it causes spaces that open up. So that's the historically rites of passage every culture every organized unified culture has for boys to be identified as moving into their roles officially Him define what being also more specifically what being an adult man is, and that it not only says what you are and how you are to be, but also about the responsibilities that you have. So it's not just about I can now feel more firm in my own sense of self, 
but it also makes it clear to me what I'm supposed to be doing to contribute and to support the community as a man. And the rites of passage have the initiation, they overcome a challenge, and they need to test themselves. This is like, that's the fundamental component when it exists. But what the argument that I'm going to make is that we can also approach that kind of thing by having more informal ways of being aware of that and thinking about ways to start to identify that for our boys. One of which can be a formal discussion with them structured and direct and clear about what it is that they're supposed to do and how they're supposed to be. The kinds of things that end up being substitutes are um, just um, going through puberty, driver's licenses, having sex for the first time, drinking, whole diplomas, 1821, hazing, tattoos, piercing, fatherhood, military service. You can see and think about it, and you will know, either yourself or guys that you know, about how that search has led them to really push things, to find ways to feel more like they've made it. I'm a man now. And without that, they're going to wander. And there's going to be um, um, a search and an attempt to push. And that's a place that lots of times for us as men, from, as boys, when we're trying to make our way into manhood, can get us into trouble and have us get lost on the road. Guys have to have some kind of, of domain of expertise, competence, um, ways to kind of feel effective in the world. That's true for women too, but it fits within this. We're talking about guys and men. And um, the, uh, another thing that, that has become a problem, which is that guy rules say you can't hug other guys because then you'd be gay. And gay, of course, is bad. Because that has some similarity to being a woman. And being a woman is bad. But we've got, we know it as adult men about the kinds of sacrifices and deprivation that we have about physical affection that's not just sex. This has been going on for generations now. But your boys are going to be are and going to be going through the same thing, and so that's another important piece of this. Okay. So the question then for me and being up here and talking to y'all today is what can you do? And one of the things that um, I'm thinking about and have thought about as a solution is to actually create a situation that helps you communicate directly to your sons about what it is they should be focused on and what it would look like for them to be the kind of man that you want them to be. And that has ended up in my having this notion about the way for you to be inspirational to them about what to aspire to and to find a way to communicate that to them. It's a form of guidance about how they're supposed to do this and what's important and the direction to go. It actually provides this letter potentially will provide the opportunity to validate the things they already, the, the ways in which they already are that are how you would like them to be. It's really important to kind of recognize what they've achieved and what they've accomplished and the kind of, of valuable and admirable person that they are even though there's still stuff to do and, and a distance to go, it, this is going to be the opportunity for you to give them some idea about what they should be looking for in terms of defining what being a man is. It certainly is a statement or often a restatement of your own values and a way to communicate that. And the thing that, that is also attractive to me about the potential for the letter is that it's something they can hold on to. So this goes into a drawer. This is something that they can refer back to. This is something that, that is a tangible reflection of this discussion about a really important thing for you and for them. <clears throat> so when you're thinking about this letter, what are the things that um, kind of larger components that are important? And one of those is that it depends on the age of your kid. So if you're writing this letter with your kid who is going into... Um, middle school, there are a certain kind of emphasis to have on the place that they're at 
in terms of just the early beginning entering into aspects of, of um, the being a physically moving into being a, a young man rather than being a boy. But also about you're in the early phases of having them kind of think about what they're going to be doing and what they should be thinking about, about what to accomplish across this time period. If they're in ninth grade or tenth grade, then it has a different kind of, of emphasis about where they're at and what, what point would you start, the things you start talking about there. If they're a senior in high school, then it's about you're about to launch and these are the things that. So there's developmental aspects of this. The length, of course, is another consideration. And I think unless you happen to be one of those kind of, of tome writers where you come up with, with the congressional record kind of length of stuff, I, I don't think the length of it is as much of a problem. If you get to be, when you get, if you get to like the fourth page, I'm going to think that probably you want to go through that and then go to the, have somebody else read it. You might want to go back and make sure you haven't repeated them three times. I, have a, I personally have a tendency when I'm talking about something to say it and then not intentionally, just the way that I'm annoying and repetitive, I'll repeat stuff like three times. Sometimes in different words, but it's exactly the same thing. So you can also kind of drone on and on is, I guess, my point I'm making. It, uh, I'm making. But writing it put aside, and so this, has, this is not just a, hey, here's the grocery list for what we need this week. The concept here would be this is something that you hope and desire that your kid will keep and have and look back on and remember. And so put, make sure that you've got truths and fundamentals in there rather than just kind of the casual day-to-day -day stuff. Um, that you're going to deal with as you just interact with your, with your kid. Um, have somebody else read it because that's always important. It often turns out that you thought you were saying this and it's, it's really coming across as that. The idea of mixing serious with light is the, that it really depends on your style. And so matching how you kind of uh, approach this, but making sure that there are really serious elements to this because that's, this is a very specific kind of intentional and important thing that you're communicating. Um, Personalizing. The idea of it being this kind of, of third person thing, I, me, my, you, us, we're, those kinds of things. And the final thing about this is that while there is deep and, and significant value to you as a father to be communicating this, as men, as boys and men, we get the information about masculinity and manhood from girls and women too. And mom has a as central a role that, that she can play in this. It depends on how y'all want to do this. And it depends on the kind of relationships that um, your son has. But that it can be a co-letter. You know, moms can write it themselves because the issues are not unique to only a guy can talk about this for their sons. Moms have wishes and dreams and goals and expectations for their sons about the kind of man that they should be um, equal. Okay, so the components then, what I, what I tried to do here was help aid a way to structure thinking about writing this by what are the different kind of uh, pieces, now, almost like you can very easily and um, straightforwardly turn these into chapters, I mean uh, paragraphs. And so, um, the setting the stage is beginning the letter with some kind of statement that is kind of saying this is something significant. And that is, you know, you'll be entering high school, um, you're preparing for adulthood. Again, the developmental stages become important here. Making decisions, you know, you'll be making decisions soon, they'll be effective. Those kinds of statements is kind of going to enter into this that gives signals to your kid that you're about to talk about some significant stuff that's broad and important. And you're going to kind of start framing how that's how that would you go about doing that. Uh, I think it's really useful to begin early on, like right up front, and say, "Couldn't be prouder of you. Here's the things that I think are wonderful about you. This is what I admire." That so again, getting a hold of the stuff that they already are doing and already demonstrate and and show to you, 
and make sure that you say something about that. And that's your mother and I love you, and we're proud of you, and you know, you may not have a lot to say about the, the fundamental qualities yet, and so you can just say we're proud, we love you, and we have all these hopes and dreams for you, and um, the, the, uh, I want, this is the kind of man that I want you to be, to continue to be somebody that I can be proud of. A little bit of guilt, pressuring is perfectly fine here, that's the value of it. Not shaming and not like um, uh, manipulating, but actually kind of uh, expectations that this is what the person should be. Then saying something about why it is that you're going to the trouble to write this letter and what it's about so that they kind of know what's going on here. And that's things like, there are things I want you to know, it's an attempt to talk about important things. Um, I want to pause and say, because I realize I have said something, you've got handouts here, and this information is these, these structured things, um, uh, paragraph suggestions are in there, and so you'll be able to kind of look through and think about this. There's also at the end of the talk, I'm going to show you where on my website you can go to get that handout that's actually more elaborate. And so th this handout is a reduced um, version of kind of condensed, but there's a lot of references about books and resources and examples of th way both ideas about how to write this, a letter like this, but also letters that have actually been written. And that's on the website there, which I'll show you when we get to. Um, the, another piece of that is going to be actually um, talking to them about the, your expectations about them as a person of character and honor and integrity and what morals you expect of them. And you'll be a, have a number of challenges and responsibility, you should, you ought to, the faith beliefs comes in here. Then there's the actual definition of manhood. What is it that you want your son to think about in terms of what it is to be a man? What are those qualities? And one of the ways that you can end up talking about that includes what are the qualities for being a man when it comes to um, being a friend and being a husband or partner and being a father and being a son or family member and being an employee or a student or a citizen or a neighbor? ways to elaborate what that looks like, about how a man approaches love and school and work and friendship and sex and marriage and alcohol and drug and their responsibilities to the community. Those things that are both the qualities, the virtues, but also, and it would look like this in these different domains of your life. It's really important, I think, to make sure that you put in some kind of reference, some kind of, of discussion, some kind of information about what do you do when things get tough, and especially if you fall short or screw up, because that's as important as how to just be always the right kind of man. You'll make mistakes when you face challenges. This is what I hope you will do. Not, I hope you'll never fail or never fall down or never fall short. But this, when you, when you do, this is also part of being a man. And then there's the notion to communicate that's crucial, which is you yourself are making a commitment to him. That you have a stake in this, and that you have a place here, and that this relationship is a fundamental part of your life and his life. And that you're committed to it. And as importantly, I think, coming back to the end of love you, you are, will be, these are the reasons that you matter to me. That communication, because God rules make it really hard for us to communicate our own affection as grown men. We were raised in these same constraints. And so it can be the case that one of the struggles about trying to talk about this or approaching writing this letter is, what do I know about men? Because it turns out we didn't have rites of passages either. 
And we're likely not to have had any real discussion about this with our own fathers or mothers or adults. And so part of what can go into this is that you also get a chance to review what matters to you. And as I talk about here, one of the things that I've discovered, both of my kids are in their late 20s now, and one of the things that has just annoyed the crap out of me as I was going through parenting when they were children and adolescents is how many times I had to reassess stuff that I'd already written off in my own mind that I was fine with. I was this honorable, I was that integrity, I was this, you know, blah, 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 blah. And being a human being, even though I'm a highly trained mental health professional, psychology stuff works on us too, and I'd already settled myself in about all the things that I was perfectly fine about, and then your kid will mirror it right in your face And so I either have to say, shut up and do what I say, or, okay, I'm going to have to reassess whether I'm really living my own kind of principles and morals. It's a pain. This letter is an opportunity for you. You will find that as you start to do this in a more formal way, you're going, okay, I'm really falling down not really paying attention to this part of something that I think is really important about how a man should be. And so you're going to run into that. I'm just going to tell you now. The idea about um, writing this letter and addressing this with your kid is what I'm calling being present. And that is having it be a personal connection. That we're trained as men to have this um, stereotypically, but still... Um, <coughs> kind of in, in our society, to still have this kind of distance. Happily, more and more of us are getting better and better at not being trapped into having this kind of emotional distance that we keep. But it happens. And in this instance, the closer you are in being present with your kid and being emotionally connected to them through this process, both by what you write and how you write, but also when you present it to them if you decide to do that, you being present is a powerful thing. You're being connected and vulnerable to them while you're presenting this and while you're thinking about writing on it will show up and makes a difference. Being hopeful and positive is crucial because of the nature of us being inundated with um, um, information and information and information that's all being funneled to us and all of it's focused on sex and aggression and, and threat because that always gets human beings' attention. And so all of the material that's presented to us <coughs> activates either our threat um, assessment or some kind of arousal. But that also tends to make us and our boys and our girls cynical and pessimistic. And so the world has never been in a better situation. Got lots of more information about that I'm not going to go into, but I'm going to tell you in statistically... Actually, factually, humanity has never been in a better position in the, on the globe. Okay. You wouldn't know that from what we, how we hear, but again, that's that filtering of information. So this hopeful and positive is a particular thing for me in talking to parents because of how vulnerable we are and how vulnerable our kids are to this negativity. And then it's going to be, I mean, Will's going to say something about this, which is the ceremony that is going to be the opportunity that you'll have to um, come here and have us get together. And I've got a presentation for teenage boys about manhood and masculinity. And what I do is talk about the issues. And then in that talk, I stop at the point that the definition for what a man is, I don't provide that. At that point, you have the opportunity in that um, space and in that time to deliver the letter to your son. Setup has been, here's the things that are important to figure out that you need to know something about and figure out how, how to be. And you will then be defining for them as an opportunity to do that. So it's a way for the fathers, to men, for men to be together in a situation where you're communicating that to your son. It's a communication that all of us as men have these views and this is an important thing. So that's an opportunity that we've done before, and, and folks, um, there are folks who found that um, helpful and useful. 
I love this characterization of, of like affection between men. There's these formal things that we have to do. Um, what I wanted to show you about is that on my website, which is drjameswellborn.com, on the public speaking um, tab, which the first page looks like that, um, you'll go down and you'll see this right here, the father to son starting off the road to manhood. And right here, here is the handout for the presentation. That's where you can find a, a, part, a, a copy of this handout that has even more than what you've got in that handout for the sake of space and time. Uh, on my website, there is drjameswalker.com, there's a survey, and that survey is located here under appearances. But if you um, would take the three to five minutes to fill that out about what you think thought about this talk and have feedback about that, I would really appreciate that. And then here's um, lots of different information. I've got my Dr. James Wellborn site, which is where I put most of the things that I'm writing. I do blogs and kind of information. All, almost all of that writing is for parents about for, of teenagers. And there's all kinds of stuff there. There's a, there's a backlog of things with topics and all that kind of stuff. So there's all that information there. But there's also on the James G. Wellborn PhD site, which is my original site, which is the private practice tab in the Dr. James Wellborn site. And in the James G. Wellborn PhD site, I have massive amounts of information on parenting for parents. And I also have massive amounts of information for teenagers. And so you can go and find information about all different kind of websites, all different kind of book resources, all kinds of other things that I originally had that for clients. And so it covers not just regular stuff, which is mostly what my parenting writing is about, regular parenting issues. But this site has regular parenting stuff and depression and anxiety and trichotillomania and all of just a whole range of things that you could run across or want or need information about. And that's a website that I maintain, I put together. Those sites are ones I've seen and that I enter myself into that, which means some of them are broken because I haven't gone back to check whether they're still active. But the point is, that is a very personal thing that I'm the only one who puts information on that site. So I've looked at all the stuff that's on there. Um, that's the blog at the, under the Articles tab the, where I've got parenting stuff. And then I have a newsletter that um, pretty much once a month I put out. And that's um, almost all, all of it's about parenting stuff. It's also got some suggestions about things to do as a family and movies you can watch together and why they would be thematic. And that kind of all right, gentlemen, this is what I have brought to talk about. You've got the handout there. We've got a day coming up. If you want to, Will's going to come up and, and close us out. I really appreciate you having me. I thoroughly enjoyed doing this. It was good to be able to talk to you.